uh, Central Bank Governor Godine Mefele uh, uh, just holding a press briefing within the hour uh, talking about the latest situations and trying to douse all the attentions around the new narrow notes, uh, the scarcity explaining what's been happening between the banks, bank customers and, and a few other issues around that. Let's uh, uh, challenge chat to this now and the need to de-risk Nigeria's politics, policy and the polity ahead of the February 25 elections and beyond. My guest is Paul Alaji, Senior Economist at SPM Professionals. Paul, a good evening to you. I'm sure you are uh, listening to Mr. Governor, a little bit of that in the studios. We'll, talk, we'll come to that a little bit later. But let's start from the wider spectrum of things. How quickly do you think the government should de-risk or decelerate the tensions around the politics and the policies right now and why? I think as a matter of fact, government needs to act very I mean, swiftly because time seems to be ticking. Uh, any government that refuses to do the needful, especially when the time to elect leaders, uh, what people will remember are the things that they experience on the immediate. As I speak to you on the street of Abuja, Fuel kill seems to be ubiquitous, and it's not different from what is happening in other parts of the country, especially the commercial capital of the country, Lagos. This is the same in Edo, it's the same in Paracourt. Even in some northern states, there is presence of kills almost everywhere. Nigerians are also concerned about having access to cash, which of course has been addressed by the central bank governor not too long ago. These are concerns that people feel that there needs to be there some level of correction very quickly so that it does not reflect in how people will make their decision, especially as it has to do with the ruling party. It's been a very a bit of a tension. We talk about a petrol scarce, uh, fuel scarcity, and then scarcity of the new Naira notes. But again, it's been a very interesting week. I, I want to put it very mildly to say interesting because if you look at the latest Moody sovereign rating downgrade to a non-investment level for Nigeria as well as for nine Nigerian banks, including the Bank of Industry, how do you respond to that? Well, it's very it's worrisome. And uh, you may not want to blame Moody, but when you look at the background and reasons that have been given by the agency for downgrading nine of the biggest Nigerian banks, and of course Nigerian sovereign, you realize that they have limited option. Because when you calculate the level of exposure by these financial institutions to Nigerian sovereign, and if you look at Nigerian budget, Nigerian financials, you know that we need to take quick action to save Nigeria and the financial institution from a big mess which may happen if we make it to be business as usual. Recall that I've had a conversation with you when IMF staff report came out, among other international reports, our Nigerian government have always said, oh no, these are international community. They may not have a full grasp of uh, what is happening in Nigeria, but what we have seen month in, month out, new reports are coming out. They are placing Nigeria, some are downgrading Nigeria, Nigeria, and the implication is that investors may not see Nigeria as places, as a destination to go. And I hope that we will take a clue from what happened in 2015-2016 when JP Morgan uh, also uh, downgraded Nigeria and eventually removed Nigeria from the list. And many have thought that Nigeria will survive it. Unfortunately, it led Nigeria to a recession. I think authorities, we need to do the need for especially fiscal uh, authority and monetary authority. Then we need to carefully reconsider what Moody is saying because it seems to align with the reality on ground. And I hope this will save Nigeria and our financial institution, nine of our best, from uh, getting into a very big mess. Well, the Minister of Finance yesterday says that the government disagree with Moody's and that Nigeria deserves a better credit rating. Well, um, I, I read the minister's uh, comment uh, where the minister had expressed surprise, or a, that's to use a, a, a friendly language, but maybe I should say the minister was shocked, expecting Nigeria to have a credit rating. Well, as students, we don't also determine the grade we have. We have another chance before the new rating comes up to quickly find useful solution to this economy. Subsidy is C30, over 3 trillion naira, and we have financial institutions 
that are exposed to Nigeria, our financials seems not to align with the reality of what we need as a nation. So beyond expressing surprise or coming up with disagreement, the question will be, what have we done as a nation to improve the financial outlook of our country and to help those who have confidence in us? When you look at what is happening to uh, the green bond Nigeria has issued, rather than many investors around the world picking Nigeria green bond, the rate at which people have interest in Nigeria green bond in recent months has been very discouraging. This is because back at home, the economy, especially the financial of the country, has not been very interesting. Well, do you think there are too many political and non-political actors right now in the economy and policies and reforms arena uh, in terms of everybody's trying to talk about the economy, everyone is getting into the new narrow notes, uh, so it looks like the whole place seems to be befuddled. Do, do you think that way? You think some of these policies and reforms are being politicized as it were because it's electioneering time? Absolutely. Everybody is taking it to politics. You see, people are not seeing the new Naira note for the merit of it, even though I personally have my concerns. But I will tell you that for years, we've been trying to face out street beggars. When you have limited cash, how do you give some out? But authorities, rather than making comments and condemning what the Central Bank of Nigeria is doing, even though I have some things I think they should improve on, but I must also say they should go back to their state and eradicate street begging. They should eradicate poverty and deprivation so that we can have a country that we attract many and corruption we go to its least Possible. The rate at which we have corruption in Nigeria, I've had conversation with you on this show where we have seen Nigeria turn their homes to wallpaper of money. How do we stop this if we don't take this decision? My only reservation is that the central bank, I haven't <coughs> mentioned success of 80% recoveries of the old notes. How do we make the same available? Because it's the supply side seems to be uh, reducing. So I think they need to work with the commercial banks as well as the uh, um, MFBs so that these funds or these monies for those that are doing petty businesses can be available. It doesn't uh, affect our growth rate at the end of the quarter. So if you ask me, a lot of them, especially politicians, people are already saying that it's affecting their primaries. People are already saying that it's, it's affecting the image of their party. And when you look at it very carefully, you want to say that is it that politicians are prepared to spend uh, their ways into office? Or what exactly are they referring to? But that does not exempt the central bank from doing the needful and those that genuinely need cash, it should be made available to them. The, the National Assembly uh, had got a committee on finances called the Central Bank Governor for uh, a bit of explanations. So that, was, that happened just a few days ago. So, uh, we're, we're trying to find out again if you have too many, uh, it's kind of too many cooks spoils the broth in the manner of speaking. Because when this announcement was initially made by the Central Bank Governor, there wasn't so much uproar from the man on the street because there was a deadline of January 31st first or so that was initially set and, and, and then it became a matter of in which folks begin to make comments as to well whether politicians are making uh, comments so uh, Nigerians need it's, it's a, a huge informal economy so what does this reveal really about the fact that Nigerians could barely survive on a day-to-day -day basis if they don't have that small little cash in their pockets well, I think survival will be very difficult. It is going to be, it, I think it will be impossible. And I tell you, in the last three weeks, I've been traveling from state to state, going to rural and urban center to measure how available are these new nodes. And I can tell you, in the last two weeks, from the city of Port Harcourt and interior part of River State, uh, Oyo State, Ibadan, and interior part of Oyo State, Kano State, and the suburb areas of Kano, including the FCT and the fringes of the city, and, and few other states that I, myself and my team uh, that we've gone to, I can tell you that main transaction, major transaction, up to about 60 to 70 percent, are still carried out in old notes. And I also tell you that when you are, go to commercial banks, they tell you that these notes are not available. It was only last week that the central bank governor, after uh, uh, making several presentations, and at the end of MPC uh, meeting, that banks seems to start loading more accurately and expected in, in ATM uh, at different ATM points. It wasn't the case. Before, we had some in some banks, and we had some other banks that don't even have 
have uh, these monies at all. What they were dispensing was still hold notes. So here, the question is, how soon will banks make available the new notes the same way they had the old notes? And if there will be reduction, because I understand the restriction that Central Bank has put in place regarding how banks can spend, uh, can disburse uh, the new notes for individuals, even generally whether new or 100 or 50 naira, how much cash people should have access to. The question is, can they have access to that money asset when Paul, you? Paul, there seems to Paul, be a gap Paul, in uh, the Paul, supply, in Paul, the value chain yeah. between the central bank and no, the people of Nigeria. No, 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 no I'm not too sure well, what is called a gap here, but because middlemen, because the central bank will not dispense cash to Nigerians directly, so they're going to go through the banks because the banks are called commercial banks. So, I how, am, how, how, I so, agree how, with so, you. so how come I agree with you. The, the middleman here, the central bank governor, just mentioned them a few minutes ago, about an hour ago or so, and said, look, the banks, and we're seeing bundles, brand new notes being spread and disrespected at social events. When the common man who needs 5,000, 1,000 naira, can get it to make transport home, but some folks are spending 100,000, 200,000, half a million at the parties. So, talk to me. Well, I think Central Bank, we need to uh, make example of those who are frustrating the country. If Central Bank had mentioned the volume of money that has been uh, in public domain, unfortunately, it's getting to the hand of politicians, it's getting to the hand of those that want to spread the money and show it off, other than those that will help with the acceleration of currency, velocity of money to improve sp sporadically so that it can improve our economic growth at the end of the day. Then Central Bank, we need to do more because they have access, the authorities at Central Bank have so information that we both do not have. Now, if they have the information... Are you asking, Paul, are you asking, are you asking, are you asking the Central Bank, are you, the Central Bank of says, is, says the Central Bank is working with the EFCC and the ICPC, would you want name and shame? Well, it's very important to at this time because when you see with what we are seeing, if this extends by another four to five months, you and I know Nigeria growth will reduce from 30% because people will find it difficult to do business. How do you, how do you uh, board a uh, commercial vehicle uh, from somewhere in, in Oshodi to, say, Ikeja? And you need to pay. How many transfers with a bus conductor expect? Meanwhile, these monies are available, these notes are available, according to Central Bank governor. They have been shared. They have been given, distributed to commercial bank. But when you go to the bank, what you see is crowd. They have restricted people. Those who made decision have profited out of it. And you say they should not be shaped until example of those who have done bad is made. So correct others. The truth is that it will be a continuous game. And Nigeria will keep suffering. And if Nigeria suffer, Nigerians suffer, eventually we will see the report card when the National Bureau of Statistics re will release at the time they will release the report of the GDP. And it might even lead to inflation, which is one of the reasons why Central Bank is, is uh, starting this policy in the first instance. Recall that they want to manage the supply side because of supply of money, because demand continues to increase. If we do not do any transaction at all, then you want to deal with deflation. Uh, you know, inflation is manageable. When you have a, a, a process where it's not even happening at all, then you have a lot to deal with because many will be thrown into poverty. And as in the last count, the number is not interesting at all. It's over 130 million. <laughs> Uh, if Central Bank know these people, it's important we know them and make these monies available to Nigerians as at the time they need it. So right now, the Central Bank governor, I'm sure you listened to Godin Emefile uh, a short while ago, uh, asking Nigerians to be calm. It is, um, uh, everyone is tense right now and, 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 and bank properties shouldn't be, be destroyed or be vandalized uh, because, because folks are frustrated they're finding way very difficult how to go home out and, and, and make a living, put a meal on the table because it's, bas it's basically a cash in hand economy that we've been running for, for, for decades uh, and we haven't really been able to grow more of the economy from informal to the formal economy and we've tried over the decades, we haven't really been able to succeed very much in that. So the informal economy continues to grow. How important is it right now that we, everybody calms down in the manner of speaking and de-risk, de-leverage the tension in the land uh, so that we don't, uh, with the election just around the corner as well, almost a lot of things happening at the same time. Well, I want Nigerians to, uh, to be calm. 
as has been said by different authorities and including the central bank governor, is important that we remain calm and we wait. We still have about seven days. The central bank has given us uh, the word I saw tweet by President Buhari, uh, that we, who has mentioned that in the next seven days, it's solutions will come. Uh, and I think we should wait. Uh, seven days is almost here. I am hoping that those are sabotaging the effort of federal government and that of central bank, that they will be brought to book in no time. And those that need this money, it will be made available to them. I also think that central bank should, uh, after I've seen the breaking uh, news yesterday, where it has said that some amount will be made available across the counter, especially for those that need this money. I think Nigeria should relax. And I'm very hopeful that there will be a lot of difference next week as uh, some of the tension that is mounting uh, now we come and Nigeria can uh, have access to their monies so that they can use it for legal things that they need to buy. Uh, th thank you so much, Paul Alaji. Great conversing with you as always. Paul Alaji, senior economist at SPM Professionals. Enjoy your weekend and see you again soon on the show.